someone in the collective needs to see my video because I'm experiencing an energy this morning and it's due to people who are why am I? Because I feel the things that are going on in the collective. What's the collective? Let's just say it's uh, earthlings. The uh, energies that I'm feeling in uh, the world right now are a getting involved with mrs jones mrs jones is someone else's husband and mrs jones is kind of like uh, mrs jones is interesting I don't know what else to tell you about me. I just keep noticing Mrs. Jones. Sometimes I want... I'm not interested anymore in Mrs. Jones. Now I'm looking around to see... Well, if people will bring me around with them. You know, I just want to be a sidekick to people. Why? Mostly because they need a sidekick. And um, as much as I, I really don't want to be a sidekick, just so you know. But their energy is... What's their energy? They have a desire. If someone has desire, the universe looks to see who can fulfill this desire. And if there's no one who really wants to fulfill this desire, then uh, nature abhors a vacuum and nature is going to say, I don't know anything about what you really want. But I know this person really wants something, and it's a sidekick. So um, I'm not going to really pay attention to you and your... You are going to be enslaved to the person who has a desire. Because they have a desire, and it must be fulfilled. So we're going to drag you out of your bed and we're going to make you walk 10,000 miles on your knees to get to the person who has a desire for a sidekick. And once you get there with all of your bloody knees, um, you're going to be this person's sidekick. So, do you see what the issue is? The issue is desire. And a lot of the times, people who have these kind of desires are not actively looking for someone to fulfill the role of sidekick. It's an unconscious desire. Where did the unconscious desire come from? It's not your desire. It's not. But the desire found you, attached itself to you, and then the desire is attached to you, and it's not satisfied being attached to you. It wants to find a sidekick for you. So humans are acting out in this case, it's a desire to put two people together. One is the main person and the second as a sidekick. 
there is this desire that is attaching itself to to humans. How do we diffuse this desire? And why do we want to diffuse this desire? It's an enslavement desire. It's enslavement. The desire is, I must be attached to two humans and then will be a three-way. Me, the desire, and two humans to be the main person and the sidekick. And then I'm going to have my three-way. This is an energy. I'm going to call it an energy because rather than calling it a desire, I'm going to put it in the terms of energetics. Now we've looked at uh, two things. We've looked at my husband, Mrs. Jones, and we've looked at uh, an energy that uh, wants to get involved with two other people. Now, is the energy a person? What did you get? Is this energy a person? To be a person what characteristics would you say? I mean an energy is let's say electricity. Electricity comes in from the pole behind your house and it comes into your main um, used to be a fuse box but maybe it's a tr the trip breakers comes into that box and then it's distributed around your house and that is raw energy well it's not totally raw I mean it's a certain frequency it's designed to power the things in your house but it's not what you would call a personality. It's general electricity. It's designed to power the instruments that you buy at Walmart. Would you call the electricity that comes into your house and distributed through the wires of your house, would you call that a person? No, you wouldn't. Now, as for our example of this uh, what I first called a desire to find uh, a main person and then find a sidekick, put them together and hold them together because that is what the desire wants to do. And then I said it's an energy, an energy that wants to put two people together. And is this energy done or is this energy riding around with them like it was a third person? Is it energy like ener electricity in your house? Or is it more like a third wheel person? A person that likes to be in the energies of three people, a trio. And this person who wants to be part of the trio... Um, what do they really want? Do they just want to be there to keep these other two people together and do nothing? Do nothing, just keep these people together. Like they, it's basically an electromagnet. You know, an electromagnet is uh, you apply energy, electricity, and you have a certain setup that creates a magnetic field. And as long as the electricity is turned on, 
you have an uh, electromagnet and it puts things together. So if that's the kind of thing it is, it simply is an electrified field and it draws the main person and the sidekick together. Would you consider that a person, the electromagnetic field? Or is it pretty much a dumb thing? In other words, you just turn on the electricity to it and, you know, in the field of magnetics, if there's something made of iron, it's going to be attracted because there's an electrical field. And then as soon as you turn the power off, then the magnetic field goes away and the iron things are not attracted. No one would say that's a person, that electromagnetic field. The only thing that would be the person would be the person who's at the switch that turns on the magnetic field that does all these things. So there is a person. There's a person. And that person is the one who is deciding to turn on the magnetic field and to turn it off. And the person has intelligence. Because it understands this switch does this particular action. So in our scenario, what I said was the desire. The desire is a person. The desire is a person. The person wants to put the main guy and the sidekick together. And this third person wants this to happen. This is what's known as controlling behavior. Because the person that is the main person and the person that's the sidekick are being put together by the third person who is the desire to put them together or the person who was at the switch of the electromagnet and throws the switch to turn on the field. So this person at the switch is a controlling person because these other two people have not asked to be put together. Why did they get put together? Because the third person initiated a desire to put them together. Controlling other people in this fashion is it's incorrect behavior. You are interfering with the sovereignty of these two other people. I'm talking to you because you are the person at the switch and you're getting involved in other people's affairs. Examples in our real world of someone who is getting involved in other people's affairs. What do you get? That's all I want to tell you. Either you got somebody that came up to mind 
or you didn't. It's not really up to me to give you more examples. It's not really up to you to, you know, give me a comment and say, this is what I got. I'm not looking for that. I want to raise your awareness of this particular kind of controlling behavior. Because it's un unconscious to a lot of people. This kind of controlling behavior. They're not aware that other people are doing it. They might be doing it. But we have to raise awareness of controlling behavior. Because it's not correct behavior. To interfere with other sovereign beings. Why do I call them sovereign? Because these other beings are not slaves, but they're being forced against their will to act out, in this case, the main person and the sidekick. They're having to act out as if they're actors on a stage. And it's incorrect to force sovereign beings to do something like this. Because that's not what sovereignty is all about. It's not about this kind of behavior. Why are they sovereign? Because they are. And you'll say, well, if they were sovereign, they wouldn't do these behaviors. The answer is no. They're not your actors. And you're still looking at them and saying, uh, well, they shouldn't do this then if they're sovereign. And the answer is, it's not so much they, it's more and more the one who is at the switch, applying force. So really the root of this talk is force. Force is not a behavior we want to see. It's not a behavior. It's not a behavior. It is not a behavior. Why? Because it's not a behavior. It's an instinct. It's an animal instinct. It's not what a sovereign would do. So when people are doing this, they are not being sovereign. They are being nothing like a human being. They are acting like a pack of wolves. Animal behavior. The animal behavior of the pack of wolves is for packs of wolves, not humans. And yet we constantly see humans wanting to control other humans and other kinds of beings. It's not sovereign. Why do we say sovereign? It's the general term that's being used by humans to discover the fact that freedom is something that belongs to each individual person. And grouping humans together, like in the old ways of, well, we're going to have to have a government to govern all the humans, 
is infringing on individual humans because they have the sovereignty. If you even look at the U.S. Constitution, it's government formed for the people, by the people. It's rooted in the sovereignty of the people. It's lovely in theory, but what happens in actuality is it's tyranny because the people who are acting in the name of the government are not respecting the sovereignty of the people. They're not consulting the people. They are taking it upon themselves to decide what is good for the people. Therefore, they are not in integrity with the U.S. Constitution. And this is instinctual behavior. Because it's not respecting the sovereignty of the people. It is controlling behavior. And that's incorrect behavior because once again, it's like acting like a wolf. There are plenty of other examples that are not to deal with government controlling people. There are corporations, small businesses, family relationships, neighborhood bully relationships. They are all based upon controlling other people by various ways. In our economy, people are being controlled by the need to have money to live. And the great monopoly game where there's a billionaire class that owns everything because they won the monopoly game, but they don't want to end the monopoly game. Clearly, everyone can say to the billionaires, okay, you won monopoly. I don't want to play Monopoly anymore. I really don't want to play, you know, let's go and take all your money away and let's go play it again to see who wins the next game of Monopoly. No, the point of playing Monopoly, the Parker Brothers game, the board game, is to see winner takes all. And everyone else who was in the game loses. Doesn't matter how many times you play Monopoly, you get one winner and everyone else loses. So the takeaway of the Monopoly game is it is a controlling game and you're going to play the game like you're a wolf and get everything you can as quick as you can because that's how you play Monopoly to win and no one plays Monopoly not to win. And then once you've won the game, you've enslaved all the other players. And you can keep giving them bank loans so they can continue to pay rent and indebt them and indebt them so they never get out of debt and they are enslaved in this game. So these are known as games people play and that is what we're playing on planet earth today we're playing a lot of what are known as ego games and they infringe on the sovereignty of other people and it's not like you have a choice you get born on planet earth and the ego game the money game 
the banker game, the rent game are already in place. And the billionaire class, well, some people um, are born into the billionaire class and, you know, they're given a place at the table. And some people are born into a very poor family. Oh, then there's, you know, the success stories of, you know, someone who manages to beat all the odds and go from being a poor person to becoming part of the billionaire class. So that's a justification for keeping the game going, giving people an opportunity to join the billionaire class. The only problem with this particular scenario is all the other people who didn't make it into the billionaire class are still enslaved. And now there's a new billionaire on the block who also has everyone else by the short and curlies. So the monopoly games that are being played through money on planet Earth are infringing on the sovereignty of the whole world. And it's time for them to end. The games that various authority figures are playing. You'll go by my word. Because I have authority over you. It's not sovereignty game. It is a game of let's see who I can enslave today. So that's what we're looking at, human slavery. And if Donald Trump says we're going to end human slavery, well, he hasn't even looked at the biggest slavery systems on the planet. He's looking at small groups of people that are kidnapping people to be sex slaves. But he's not looking at the huge money system that enslaves planet Earth. He's not looking at the authority figures who are telling people whatever they're telling people and you're going to follow what I'm saying because I'm going to enforce it with police forces. I'm going to enact new regulations on you, or if you're at a business, um, we're going to have more rules for you to follow. These are all enslavements. So, you know, Mr. Trump, if it's time for you to get rid of human slavery, you're going to have to get rid of all of these kind of things. And I don't think Mr. Trump is even going to consider watching my video. I'm sure of it. Mr. Trump is an egotistical maniac. And those of you in the United States who have an election coming up have no choice. You've got egotistical uh, orange-haired maniac. And you've got a uh, disgusting creep who loves to paw young people. If I was an American, I would not vote in the presidential election. I would withdraw consent to be governed because the U.S. Constitution has been shit on by the people who put themselves up for candidates. So don't elect someone like this. Don't vote. And yes, there will be 
millions and millions of votes cast because they won't see my video and they won't agree. But I don't agree. And I'm not American. So I don't consider Donald Trump to be my president. And I don't consent to all of his rules and regulations. And I don't consent to all the other people who are in the American government, one way or another, to have any permission to control me. Therefore, I command all of you Americans to withdraw from anywhere other than your own country. Get out of the rest of the world. Take your satellites out of the sky. Take your bases out of other countries. Take your navy out of the oceans. And take your American tourists out of other places that aren't in your own country. And if you think I'm singling out America, no. I'm going to tell everyone on the planet, go home. Oh, we just did, didn't we? Hmm. Isn't that amazing? We told everyone to go home and quarantine themselves. I don't consent to this quarantine. I don't consent to any of these things. They're all controlling behaviors. And I don't care what your rationale is. I don't care. Because it's your rationale and it doesn't float the boat with me. It's controlling behavior. And I don't want to be controlled by you. And if you think that I'm going to spread the plague, then it's your issue, isn't it? Because you have a certain belief structure. You believe in a germ theory that you were taught at school. I don't believe in germ theory. So you're going to inflict your germ theory on me forever? No, I'm going to tell you you're incorrect. You were brainwashed. You got it out of a textbook. You got it out of a school, but it doesn't make it true. It just makes you a brainwashed control freak. And I don't care about your science because you never did the science. You got it out of a textbook and your teacher got it out of a textbook. And whatever your applications are to use the germ theory, it also comes down to you see what you want to see. Because your instincts are, I see it, it must be true. And that is what you were taught. But it is not the truth. The truth is you see what you want to see. Because that is a higher truth. Because you're not a textbook. You are alive. And being alive means what you want is what you get. And if you've been told this is the way things are and you look for it, that's what you're going to see. That's the way it works because you are alive and you have a consciousness. And if you program your consciousness, it's going to give you what you programmed it to do. And I don't think you're going to really understand this because you really don't want to let go of your programming. Because it doesn't make sense to you. Because you're brainwashed from the time you were born until right now. You're brainwashed into someone else is going to tell me. Whether it's a book or a teacher. It's going to be coming from outside of you instead of being something from your inner connection to the source of it all. And how did this all come about? It came about, I don't know how, but it did. And that's what we're looking at now. A lot of people who are continually backing the controllers on this world, 
They're backing them because they don't know any better. Ignorance. And now that you've heard this lecture, you're ignorant anymore. And as far as Mr. Jones, the husband of someone else, that's really a different lecture altogether. But I'll, I'll tell you about Mr. Jones, the husband is, he's not even your husband. And he's not even your wife. Mr. and Mrs. Jones are somebody else's concern, and it ain't yours, and it's not your concern to figure out who's it's basically none of your business, Mr. and Mrs. Jones's affairs. So it's time for you to quit snooping into other people's affairs. That is also known as your instinct. So it's time to stop spying on other people. Whether you're a government or a corporation or a person, it's time for you to stop controlling people and spying on people. It's time for you to go and get real. Which means letting go of all of the bullshit that you've picked up along the way as your rationale for all the things you do.